am joined this evening by future champion jockey, Harry Cobden. Thank you very much for taking the time out to speak to me, Harry. Are you well? Good evening. Yeah, very well, thank you. Yeah, it's, always a, it's always a pleasure to do these things. Oh, fantastic. Well, maybe we should just cut to the chase. First of all, I think you have got the potential to do whatever you want in terms of jockeyship because you're only 21, you're already an incredible jockey. I think tactically you're really smart as well. So what are your plans in jockeyship? Do you have a, like a, an idea of what you'd like to achieve? Do you want to be champion jockey or do you want to just ride it out for a few years and then move on to new things? Yeah, I think this year um, will probably be the best chance that I could actually probably go for jockey's championship because the yards that I ride for, Paul and Colin Tizard, don't really have um, many run in the summer. So, you know, in previous years, Richard Johnson's ridden 100 winners before I've ridden 10. Um, but, you know, this year, it's obviously a completely different scenario. Um, and the jockeys haven't really run loads of winners so far. So, you know, I think Brian Hughes is 11 in front of me now, whereas normally the leaderboard would be probably... 70 or 80 clear of me so you know I've got quite a lot of ammunition lined up for the winter um, and this year I'm definitely prepared to to give it a good go ride as many horses as I can for as many different people and um, you know 10 winners isn't 10 or 11 winners isn't actually much to much to claw back and um, I think you know the firepower is there if, if I'm if I've got a good chance of you know doing it. Fantastic. And I, I genuinely do think you've got a good chance of it. Your statistics prove that you're always there or thereabouts. Obviously, you're riding for a couple of top yards. So that must have been a bit of a maybe difficult decision to choose between Paul and Colin Tizard's, but I definitely think you chose the right one. You get the best of both worlds, you still get those Colin Tizard mounts. Is there anything that you've been working on with either of those yards that might be interesting for the season ahead? Um, they've, they've Obviously, Paul's got you know nearly... 200 horses and Colin's got 150 in there as well so there's there's plenty of talent in there and um you know just riding out I've, I've seen a, I've, I've seen a few sort of young horses schooling and 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 whatnot you know um I think I schooled one this week for for Tiz called Killer Kane that looks very smart and you know even even the older horses like the big breakaway um you know horses like that they're that are progressing to to fences and um, you know that they look really smart in down at um, the Tizar stable, and you know down at Pools, we've probably schooled the whole yard. So um, you know the likes of McFadbis is Solo that they've they've progressed really well. Solo's been cut, he's filled he's out, he's grown. Hopefully he's improved. Um, I've schooled Clander's Oboe, Surname, Politolog. They all look fantastic as well, and you know hopefully we can um, keep all all of the good ones wrapped up and uh, they get to the races in one piece and they go and perform. Perfect. So it's not too far now till the National Hunt season gets underway, what I class as proper, the Chepstow season opener. So the fact that you probably want to hit the ground running, is there any horses that we should be keeping an eye on that you think are going to run well there? Yeah, look, I, I, I think, you know, Paul's horses always improve for, for um, Chepstow massively, don't they? Um, you know, I, I'd say he's probably got one for every race, you know, the four-year-old hurdle is plenty that could run in that I'd say the obvious one that sort of looks looks like he's the one going there now for the four-year hurdle would be time white you know he's 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 a he's a proper horse I don't think we saw his true running um in the Fred Winter at the festival last year uh they've got plenty for the novices the Persian war obviously McFabulous is still a novice 145 rated novice in a Persian war he looks Fairly, fairly spot on for that, doesn't he? And you know, we've got a few for the novice chase. And Rillo is is a possibility, and there's and there's a few others to to go there as well. The Silver Trophy, you know, is there's horses that 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 could run in that. Um, you know, I'm just struggling to think off the top of my head, but um, there's and 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 you know, we we um on every Thursday morning we take a load of horses down the uh, flat gallop and work them like young horses to to run in bumpers. So we've we've probably got you know the best best part of 30 sort of four-year-olds to run in bumpers this year and then and, and you know they they were all lovely stores that cost a few quid and Paul's taken his time with them he's trained them for 12 months last year um, and he's brought them in again and um, you know I think the the patience is is really paid off and they they should all go and run well. Sounds good and then obviously with the fact that we did miss Aintree there was a couple of bumpers there where I suspect Paul would have targeted a couple of horses do you think any of those that might have been held back for big targets might 
to be seen at Chepstow? To, to be honest, um, our bumper horses weren't actually that good last year. We only had a few winners. Um, the one horse I did ride around when Canton was called Confirmation Bias. Now, he he is going to go hurdling this year. And, um, you know, I looked at him the other morning and schooled him. He's a, he's a, he's, he looks to be a proper animal. Um, he's quite hot and difficult, but... Um, you know he could be uh, he could be quite special. Um, Potences J- Jared O'Sullivan. He's got a few uh, he's got a few nice horses there. Um, you know just off the top of my head, I was looking today a few novices like um, the lucky one and, uh, and a nice four year old there today that was uh, going up the gallop called Rochester. And he, he he looked fairly smart. So um, there's you know there's so many I could reel off, but you know that was just the top of my head that I even saw that I was looking at today that you know. Um, that sort of go under the radar, but I was down at the second yard today, and you know they look they look bloody smart horses that that could t- could that could do anything, you know. Well, I've definitely got quite a few names out of you. We're going to move on to in Down Royal, where Flanders Over went last year. I heard that Paul was thinking of sending his surname there. Um, is that still the case? And if so, are you still going to be going over? Yeah, um, um, Paul seems fairly keen to to go there with him this year. Um, look, he's very good, fresh. Hopefully, he's bounced back from. <laughs> A couple, you know, poorer runs at the end of last season, but you know he looks fantastic. I scored him the other morning. He was jumping as well as he's ever jumped. Um, now I think he could possibly take another one over with him. I'm not sure which one it is at the moment, but I'm sort of hearing that maybe Master Tommy Tucker might go there as well. Um, so you know they'd be two good rides to have, wouldn't they? And um, that Master Tommy Tucker, he's He's a bit frustrating because he obviously struggled to stand up the last couple of times. But, you know, when he's on song, he's got a serious engine. So would he be looking more towards the Daily Mirror, the two and a half mile? Of the group? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, he. I think Paul's given him a wind up this summer and um, that's definitely helped him. Um, you know, he, there's a couple of couple of factors that go through my mind when he's when he's fallen maybe his wind was catching him out a little bit and he was getting a bit short of oxygen and it was taking his mind off the job maybe it might just be that he's not really a good jumper I don't know but um if we can if we can keep him on his feet then then there's plenty of races to be won with him do you think there'd be any option or any thought process of going back over hurdles this season to at the stairs hurdle maybe um I, I don't really know uh you know I think he has got a good jump in him. Um, so if we can get him right over fences, then I think we'd we'd see a very very smart horse. But obviously, if it if it doesn't go to plan, and then you know Paul's one for one for if, if you know it's not going right, we've got to change it, and you know he could do anything. Yeah, he's definitely a very talented horse. Um, there's one that was in behind him when he fell at Kempton, which I'm going to come on to a little bit later on. But before we do that, talking about Dan Royal, talking about that champion chase from last year. Flanders over, obviously ran in it second. I thought that was a pretty decent performance. Then obviously we had Lost in Translation going and doing what he did in the Betfair Chase, surname beating out your then it all stems down to the King George. So from my perspective as a, as like a punter, I did think Flanders over, I was pretty happy with that comeback run. So I'd be interested to know your thoughts on that down royal. But also I, f- I feel like nearer to the time, maybe the recency bias of what surname had done and all the everything that had gone on. I sort of put Clanders over on the back burner. So you obviously had the very difficult choice of choosing between the former King George winner or the highest rated horse in training and the favourite for the race. So I suppose that was difficult for you. But how, how did you come to the decision in the end? And what did you make of that, that comeback run for Clan at Down Royal? Well, look, it was it was a good run. Um, he obviously improved for the run, didn't he? he? He always has done, to be fair. You know, he always sort of needs his first run and comes out and does something special second time out. But... Um, Look, it was a, it was obviously a hard decision, but you know, at the end of the day, um, it's a good position to be in, isn't it? You know, to 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 pick from a previous King George winner or the highest rated horse in the country is 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 a, is the position that every jockey wants to be in. You know, unfortunately, I picked the wrong decision, but um, that's just how it is. At the end of the day, uh, I did the same at Cheltenham in the Champion Chase. Uh, <laughs> cost myself a lot of money, but at the end of the day, I you know. The day's gone. You can't worry about it. You got to think of the next day and um, try and put it right. Absolutely, yeah. And I don't envy you having to make those sorts of decisions. Like you say, it's the position you want to be in. The real big ones, um, and obviously, Politolog, like you just touched on there, and the Queen Mother. I'm pretty sure I read an interview from you before. That he's one of your favourite horses as well. 
Yeah, and yeah. Backs Dynamite dollars at fifties for the champion chase, so you could have done a little bit better than that when everyone else was withdrawn. But never mind, we won't go back and cover that one over. So <laughs> I did mention there. Obviously, you went over to Down Royal, only had a handful of rides. So I'd be interested to know about your sort of race riding tactics when you go to certain race courses. So how do you handle it at places like Down Royal where you don't get many rides? And then do you really study the race courses any more than just walking them the day before or the day of the race? Yeah, look, I, 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 I always walk the track wherever I go racing, whether it's Brompton on a Monday or Cheltenham on a Saturday. Um, does it give you a edge? Uh, I don't know. But, you know, you do see things that, that you wouldn't see if you sat in the, in, in the changing room, don't you? So, um, yeah, you know, when, when you go to Down Royal, look, I've obviously watched plenty of replays of the, of the races that I'm riding in. Um, I get on well with the jockeys out in Ireland as well. So, you know, if I need any advice, Ruby would I I call Ruby or ask Ruby or you know speak to someone. You know, you can't be ever ever afraid to ask, can you? So, um, yeah, I suppose it's just like going up a different gallop or something, isn't it? You um, you know, once you once if you if you're well and capable to ride, you you get on all right. I wasn't quite sure how you're going to answer that one because I, I, you come across as a person that's like very. I say pragmatic. I suppose you like think about stuff, but you don't necessarily want to dwell on it. But I like the fact there that it's just another thing to do, isn't it? You will walk the course for the sake in case there's any bonus, I guess. But it just goes to show that your like talent and ability on the horse is really what makes all the difference, maybe. Well, so, yeah, and and, it'll, and it also it also helps if you know the you know the horse that you're riding, and you know um, you can you can you can you can make make decisions if you want to press on a little bit earlier if you if you if you if you've got to hold them up and, and and play it late you know all those things obviously factor in don't they so it's it, it helps when you know that know the horse you're riding absolutely and that comes on nicely to the next point i was going to make so i fancy myself as a bit of a judge but i am obviously an armchair jockey i've never sat on a horse so is there anything that like i obviously wouldn't know about horses that i probably should know in terms of like racing that might be worth mentioning. Um, you know, no, no horse is the same, and they and, and they've all, all got minds of their own, haven't they? Um, you know, some horses don't like to hit the front. Other horses are better from the front. Some horses don't like to be covered up. Um, you know, they're all very different, and it's a jockey's job to figure it out and 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 obviously try and get the get the horse to run to the best of its ability. Um, you know the. the the best jockeys always get it right, don't they? You know, the Davy Russells, the North Feelys, the McCoys, the, the Ruby Welshes, they 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 they're very quick to, to to figure things out and you know, they, they're obviously good at riding tracks as well. So, you know, it's it's a it's a tough one, but you know, no horse is the same and, and, and they're all different. But, you know, if if sometimes you can overthink it and, and complicate it. So it's yeah, it's it's, it's actually t- quite a t- tough question that one. Yeah, fair enough. And I think when you've mentioned all those great jockeys in there, you're well worthy of being within that bracket as well, Harry. Some of the rides I've seen you give the horses where I've expected pace angles from different positions, you go and do something completely different every time you're always right versus me. So, well done <laughs> on that. <laughs> on to maybe some insider info. So, I don't know how much of this you can spill or how much you want to spill, but um, I'm always interested to know, I touched on before about some horses that you'd have been riding at Collins or balls or other yards that maybe that could be the ones to keep an eye on for the season but maybe from last season or a couple of seasons ago even is there any horses you've ridden in races behind that you think wow that's pr- pretty decent animal they've not quite shown what they could have done yet um i know there's a there's there's a few horses down in ditch yet that i think can improve and will improve you know Paul's obviously uh the main man when it comes to figuring a horse out and getting the best out of it. Um, but I suppose the, the the obvious one that that is in my mind would be um, uh, Brave Man's Game. He ran in two bumpers last year around Ascot. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I sat on him the other morning. He's physically improved a lot. I think Paul obviously trained him last year. He's learned a lot about him. And, and, and I think that would be a horse that could go and do quite well this season he jumps very well and uh we're fairly confident that he's got a decent level of ability um another horse i scored the other morning I, I, now i wouldn't know much about this one but he certainly felt quite smart was um pozo emery i put him in a put him in a blog at the end of last year um now i do quite like that horse i don't know how good he is but he's certainly doing all the right things at the moment and um 
he's shown us that he, he could turn into a nice horse. And then there was a preview night I did before Cheltenham this year. I spoke to Richard Johnson. He did mention this in all the recordings, but some of it didn't make the crop. But he told me some comments from jockeys in the weighing room, how they were talking about some of their Cheltenham Festival mounts. Um, they were pretty useful bits of information as well. So I was just wondering if there was anything you're hearing whispers of or you heard whispers of of last season where there's any particular horses that jockeys are really mad keen on. Maybe you wouldn't be expecting them to be so bullish. Um... It's a little bit early days in the season, to be honest. They're not really, because obviously the horses haven't come out yet, so we don't really know uh, what we've got. But um, I know everyone from 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 the Tizar camp was a huge fan of um, the Big Breakaway. He's obviously looked very good in his run at Newbury and 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 where else, wherever it, wherever else he ran. I think Cheps there, and then he obviously ran at Cheltenham. But you know, I, well, actually, I know he finished fourth, but it it was a it was a very good run. Um, you know he could be he could be anything. He's a very smart horse, and they obviously like him a lot down there as well. So um, I suppose that would be one that, that that I could pick off out out, out the top of my mind. So you're getting plenty of names off of you. So I'm going to give you a name. So we're going to be back to talking race targets. Danny Whizbang. I love this horse. I think he's seven going eight this year. I could be mad. So I'm just thinking while well, I've got you on camera, maybe you can put me out of my misery. I think off of one four five, he has definitely got a big handicap in him. I thought after his Newbury run where he jumped right for the first few and then you managed to get him into a better rhythm, maybe because it was a three-runner race, he got the run of the race out of the bat, but I thought that was a really good effort. I reckon he could be a elaborate trophy horse. Now, I know there's obviously another one from Ditchett that's going to take higher rank, but is the Hennessy, do you reckon, or elaborate trophy a race he could compete in, or maybe is he more of a Welsh national horse, or am I completely wrong and he's reached his ceiling? Do you know, I don't really know. I'm, uh, I've got a... I've got a I've got a big question mark next to him. I don't know wh- whether he's going to train on lots or, or you know he he could he he might have reached his peak, but then at the same time he's the sort of horse that, uh, you know he's a he's a big big brute of a horse, isn't he? So you know he he might come out this year. He might have improved again. He could go to you know he might go to a mark of nearly 160. You just you just don't know with a horse like that because he never sort of gives his all at home he's always saving a bit in the locker um and he's always there for a rainy day which is is no bad thing so um it's it's a hard one i don't i i'm 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 not sure what he's gonna do but whatever he is done he's obviously he's proven that he's a he, he's a decent standard already hasn't he and he's definitely a horse that is going to go and have plenty more good days well, I think us punters would call him a cliff horse by the way that you've described him. He's clearly potentially got more to give, but whether we're going to see it or not, I guess probably is a different story now. But I still like him. So obviously I mentioned the Labrick trophy there. Top of the game. I saw Harry Darren put a clip up of top of the game galloping. We don't get to see too much of the fancy stuff. You obviously do. Bird's eye view sat on his back. How is top of the game? I actually haven't ridden him this season, but um, he he is a horse that obviously could do anything um if he's all as good as we think he is then then obviously uh it'd be great to go straight to um the elaborate trophy try and get that one under our belt um you know all being well that he stands stands training this year there's no reason why he shouldn't um he physically looks fantastic um and and paul's really pleased with him but you know he's he's sort of the one horse in the back of my mind that you know if he came back right um He's the sort of horse that could go and line up in a gold cup and have a real live chance and you'd ride him with plenty of confidence knowing that, you know, he'll stay every yard up the hill and he'd be a great, great ride to have in the race. Well, it will be hopeful that he is back to somewhere near his best for the season. Like you say, that will potentially be the target where he goes off to begin with. I remember when he ran in the, the Feltham or the Celtic Star Novices chase, he didn't look like, like overly big, um, looked like he would have probably improved for the run. I sort of kind of wrote him off a little bit after that for the RSA. Again, maybe some recency bias, but that RSA form is solid. Like you say, potentially he could be gold cuppy horse. The fact that you're saying he looks well at the moment as well is another positive I take from that because, as I say, I thought maybe I'm wrong. I just felt like the Felton, I know it's a while back now, but do you think maybe he would have needed the run back then? Um, do you know, it was probably more a lack of experience than anything. The first day I rode him was down in Exeter and like a five-runner novice chase. And... Um, 
he went round at the flagman and he lost, I don't know, 40 lengths at the start. So he pretty much had a had a, had a public schooling session, got into the race and Deffy De Sol had to battle hard enough to beat him when he gave him a 40 length head start. So um, that was probably quite a good run. Then he went to Kempton on, you know, decent ground. Uh, I thought, right, we'll get over two out, win the last and hopefully job's good. And, uh, but then obviously Le Bagoir, is a tough mare, isn't she? I sort of, I got to the front. I had a big, slow sort of jump at two out, probably lack of experience. Le Bagua battled back. She's, she, you know, she'd had, she'd been to the well plenty of times. She knew what she was doing. And I just felt, you know, that if I could have ridden him again, I'd have taken more time and, and, and I wouldn't have got into that position. I'd have probably arrived up sides at the last and we wouldn't have a battle from two out. Um, so then I, I obviously learned a lot from that, went to Cheltenham, Took my time a little bit. Good jump at the second last. Wing the last, and he won a little bit cosy. So, um, you know, it's obviously it's a learning curve, isn't it? But um, at least uh, we got it right on the on the on the big day. Yeah, definitely, and that was to my dissatisfaction because I was on, on Santini all season for that, and I rude it as well because, like I said, I saw him at, at Kempton, and I thought oh, he probably would come on for it, but. Hey ho, that must have been some buzz though, because like you say, he won it fairly cosy in the end. And obviously, it's not ideal him missing last season. But would you see it as any like negative for him towards the Gold Cup, or do you think maybe the extra bit of time off, extra school and extra work? I don't know how much you managed to get into him, but whether it would be a hindrance? Do you know? I don't think it's probably hurt him too much. He might come back and he 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 might really struggle, but at the end of the day, he's probably he, he's he's he'd be the biggest horse I've ever ridden. Um, he's a massive horse and he's still got age on his side he's still young you know probably a little bit of time to strengthen up and fill out because although he's such a big horse he's quite a narrow horse anyway you know he's not a big heavy horse um, he's an athlete so you know it, it, it might not be the worst thing that's ever happened to him um, he might he might fill out strengthen up and hopefully he'll come back bigger and stronger and uh, we'll see a serious horse and then don't want to get too much into your tactics for the Labrador Trophy because I'm sure you haven't thought about them too much yet. But given the fact there, like you said at Kempton, the timing of the ride, you learned a bit more for that, so you've got it bang on at Cheltenham. With the fact that he will be top weight and he'll be carrying all those pounds and it is a comeback run, and like you mentioned, he probably is a Gold Cup horse, do you think maybe rather than him getting into a real battle, you'd be minding him? Or whenever you're riding a horse, is it just about that day you need to get him to win, do you think? Oh, no, we'll be thinking about Cheltenham. Um... We're obviously going to go there to win the race, but um, you know, if, if it's not if it's not happening, if it's not happening, it's not happening. I certainly wouldn't knock him around to to finish fourth. Um, but yeah, you know, obviously I've I've I've, I've thought about it already, and you know, he's, he, those class horses they they travel like a like a different gear in in a, in a handicap. You know, it's it's believe it or not, it's a hell of a difference riding in a Grade One than it is uh, is a handicap. You know, a handicap is. It's easier for the horses that sort of, you know, you ride in a gold cup and they go a gallop from start to finish. You ride in a handicap, you know, with a Hennessy gold cup. There is a bit of let up somewhere along the line where you can get a breather in and it is a little bit easier on a horse. I know there's more more runners in a in a Hennessy gold cup, like, sorry, in a Lagwick trophy rather. But um, there is a bit of let up in there where you can fill one's lungs up and uh, give them a chance. You know, last season I was quite unfortunate. I, I, I came up. Came away from the race disappointed. I thought I should have won on um, Elegant Escape. I missed a couple of fences down the back and got a little bit behind. He wasn't really travelling, and oh, I was probably jumping the cross fence when the front when the front ones were jumping the the first in the straight, and and he flew home and couldn't quite get there. So um, it's one race I I, I want to get back, and uh, I'm going to give it a, a good go. Good man. Well, you definitely got time to do it. You've got a decent chance this year. Like you've said, they are different races. And he does travel so well in those handicaps. I remember his Coral Cup as well. He just travelled like a dream in there. But I suppose that's enough about top of the game now. Um, is there... I know we've touched on again. We've already mentioned Paul's yard. I've mentioned Collins' yard. We've got some really nice novice prospects this season for chasing, for hurdling. I know we've got Pick Dory. We'll be going over fences now. And we know that Paul Nichols gets the best out of his horses over fences, I think. And Rilo that you've touched on before, I, I think he... Last season was pretty decent, to be fair, for a horse that looked like he would improve so much more. He looked fairly babyish to me. So of the maybe novice chases, where do you see him going distance-wise for the season? Uh, yeah, well, I think he's he's relatively slow. I think he won three miles. Um, stays very, very well and, and, 
and you know touch wood he's he's a he's a very good jumper and i think he'll uh he'll improve well you know i we i thought you know going into last season with him whatever we did over hurdles would be a bonus because he was always going to be a chaser and you know he was fortunate enough to pick up a grade two i think um was it sand down so um i thought you know we did we did well with him and uh We've already schooled him this year. He looks fantastic. He jumped well. He's fresh as paint. His body feels physically fantastic when you're on his back. So, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's exciting. So, potentially, he could be going counter-star novices chase, RSA-type horse, do you think? Yeah, he could be. You know, whether, you, you need to be a very good horse to go there, don't you? Um, I'm sure they'll start off small. It could be a possibility a run at Chepstone, three-mile novice. Um, he probably will go up against... Tizard's big breakaway, so it'd be a it'd be a it'd be a good race early on in the season. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. You know, we'll we, we'll certainly see how good he is. But you know, whatever he does at Cheps, though, he'll improve a, imp- improve for the experience for the run over fences because you know, unlike a lot of horses there, a lot of sort of point to pointers, he wouldn't have jumped um, uh, fences in Ireland. He, he wasn't a point to pointer. He was a he was a store and he ran in bumpers and novice hurdles. So um, he'll learn a lot from that. And then Pickdor he I know that Paul's been raving about him every season for the last few years. And I think, again, he said that he's probably his horse to follow on a couple of bits I've been reading up about. How do you see him for the season? Arkalish horse, would you say? Yeah, definitely. He's got a, he's got a lot of speed. Um, he's got very high cruising speed. Um, you know, and, and, and hopefully we can, we can get him into a good rhythm somewhere and uh, get, a, get a good clean round of jumping in. Um, and and then and then work our way to the to the top with him. Um, I've actually already schooled him this year. He looks fantastic. Um, he's grown a little bit, and you know, last year he carried a lot of weight in the um, Betfair Hurdle when he won, and he was very tough. He stayed right to the line, so um, he's obviously one that that could do anything this year. Yeah, he's always looked like he's going to be a really nice horse, and I just he's just always not given the impression that we've seen the best of him yet. So hopefully that is still to come. Um, I'm aware that I'm taking up most of your evening, so I'll probably look to wrap it up ish now. Um, something that I've always found interesting is like Harry Darren puts lots of stuff up on Twitter with the socials. Obviously, he's a youngster, threw in the saddle, didn't he? I think after a, an injury, I'm guessing he'll be going down the training lines. Is that something you've thought about future wise? That he's obviously a youngster, you're a youngster, you two could be the future of racing and you're getting to work together at such a young age? Um, yeah, look, he's. There, he's obviously done a tremendous job in being Paul's assistant trainer, hasn't he? He's learned a lot off of him, and um, there'd be no better man to uh, to to go racing and 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 talk to the owners and and saddle the horses and make sure everything goes right. He's he's you know he does everything by the book. He does a fantastic job. I wouldn't ever have to get a a, a pull on a girth or my saddle checked or resaddled. You know he is very very good at it probably the best i've ever had actually to to saddle one of the horses you know he never puts the saddle too far up the neck or too far back and um yeah he's a he's obviously a, a, a big part of the team down in ditch it now and um hopefully for for as for as long as i'm in ditch it he'll stay there and and, and keep help 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 paul keep the show on the road because you know he's um he, he does play a massive part yeah, and that's it. It's all about the team, I suppose. The fact that you've got the confidence that everything's going to be set up right for you. Paul's going to get them right for the days. All you've got to do is sit and hold on for most of the time, haven't you? There's, uh, there is certainly one thing for sure, and that, that's, uh, that's that Paul Nichols isn't going to retire anytime soon. Um, he's still definitely got the fire in his belly, and he, uh, he wants it more than ever. Yeah, that's really good to hear as well. So you obviously get help from all of them. I'm sure you still have your yard duties to do, shoveling out, etc., etc., because you've done this, I will give you an open offer that any time you need me to come around and shovel some, you know what, then I'm your man. All you've got to do is give me a shout. To, to, to be honest, I'm, uh, I'm fortunate enough that I don't have to do too much of that anymore. Um, I just go in there and, and, and ride out five mornings a week. So I'm. Uh, well, it was a pointless offer then. I mean, I can't really offer to come and ride out for you. Maybe I'll just make you a cup of tea next time I see you. No, but I'm sure we could have you doing a bit of, bit of brushing or something. Oh, yeah, get in there. That sounds good. Um, it helps you, Harry. Like I said, you've done me a favour. The followers will love all this sort of stuff. I just, I love the horse racing anyway. You are definitely probably one of my favourite jockeys. That, well, not probably. You are my favourite jockey at the moment. You are obviously an incredible talent. I wish you all the best for the season. This is a proper chance, I think, for you to get there or thereabouts with a champion jockey title. I just thank you so much for coming on and giving me the time.
No, thank you, Dave. And it's you know it's um it's great that you're you know putting it out there. And I think a lot of this stuff is going to be more so on social media now. So it's 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 great to keep people informed. And um you know you, you're doing yourself a, a real credit. So um thanks very much, and more than happy to help. Oh, fantastic, Harry. Well, obviously the fact that there's not going to be many crowds at the, at the festivals this season. I'm hoping that some of this sort of content will fill people's lives up a little bit more. So potentially further in the season, if I maybe reach out again, we might get a chance to do it again. Well, hopefully you'll give me a shout when I've ridden a few winners. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Sounds good, Harry.